Hey guys, in today's video, I'm going to be introducing a new module to Python and a new database called SQLite. And we're going to be working with SQLite in Python to do all of the CRUD operations. So let's get into it. In this video, first of all, I'll just introduce what SQLite actually is and the use cases of it, because it's a little bit different than all the other SQL um, databases. Then we'll check out what we're going to be doing in today's program. And then we'll just get straight into the demo, in which first we'll just create a database and a table, and then we'll add data, read data, update data, and delete data, or all the CRUD operations. So first of all, let's just check out what SQLite actually is. So SQLite is a relational database and it's very, it's known, unlike all the other SQL databases, SQLite is actually not a client to server relationship. Instead, it's a local program and all of the code is just in the end program. And just like most other SQL databases, it uses the PostgreSQL syntax. And finally, it's called SQLite because it's made for lightweight applications or just lightweight uses or smaller applications. So now let's check out some of the use cases of SQLite. So first of all, SQLite is great for desktop apps that aren't going to be used by a lot of people because it doesn't handle very large operations, which is why it's called SQLite, because it handles lightweight apps. It's also good for record keeping because record keeping doesn't have that much and it's just a light application. And finally, the use case of SQLite is that it can handle smaller and simpler loads of data. So let's get into what we're going to do in today's program, or all the CRUD operations. So first of all, what are we going to do with SQLite in Python? First of all, I'll just show you a SQLite table in an application called TablePlus that I'm going to use. Then inside of Python, we're going to create a database and a table. Then we're going to take that table and then add data to that table. Then we'll read some data and print it out on the terminal screen. And then we'll update data in our table and then delete data in our table. So now that you know all about SQLite, let's actually get into the demo so that we can work it with it. So let's get into it. So I'm going to go to Adam here. And as you can see, I have five programs. So first we have create.py, then we have addData.py to add the data into our table. And then we have read.py so that we can read all of our table data and then print it out on the terminal screen. Then we have update.py and delete.py. So the first thing we have to do is actually create our database so that we can actually see and do stuff with it. So I'm going to use a module called SQLite3. And then that's how you spell it. So import SQLite3. And now we can use all of the operations. But now we want to actually make a variable for that. So let's say connection to our database. So it'll automatically connect to a database if it's there in the same folder. And if it's not there, then it'll create a new database, which is what we're doing here. So SQLite3.connect. And then here we want to whatever we want to call it. Let's call this, um, how about we'll just call this users. So then this will be users.db for database. So then we'll call it users.db. So now it'll create a database for us called users.db and then we should see it in our folder. So then I'm going to say cursor equals connection, which is our variable, dot cursor. This is so that we can do the operations. So whenever we want to run queries, we would use our cursor because that's uh, doing the cursor for the connection. So we needed this cursor function here. So then we can just run our first command. And we've created our database here, but then there's a hierarchy of things. So now inside of the database, we want to add a table so that we can add data into that table. So now let's write our command or our query. So I'm gonna put this into a variable called command. And then here we'll have our query to run. In this case, we're gonna create a table. So if you know SQL syntax, then this is the same syntax as that. There's no differences. 
So let's put this in a string first, and then we'll just have our query. So create table, if not exists, so we don't want it to create if it's already there. So create table if not exists, and then let's call this table users also, just to for simplicity. So this is just gonna be a classic user table. So the first, now inside of this, we'll have to provide all of the columns. So the first column is name, and then that's gonna be a text data type. And then after that, password, which is also gonna be a text data type, and then age, which in this case, it's not a text data type, it's an integer data type. So there we go. That's our query. So now if we ran this in a standard database, then it would run and it would create this table. But since this is Python, we need to actually execute this query. So we're going to use our cursor variable that we created. So cursor.execute and then command. But if you don't want to create the extra variable, then you can just have your uh, query right here. So let's save that. And then now we can actually just run it. So I'm going to, in Atom, you can actually, now you can um, have a terminal inside of Atom. So I'm just gonna use that to my advantage. So Python 3 and then our file name, which in this case, it's create.py. All right, there we go, that worked. So now you can't see any visible changes because we didn't choose to print anything. But if you see in the folder, we have users.db. And Adam doesn't support databases, but we can use another application called Table Plus to open this up. So I'm going to go to Table Plus, and then let me just drag this over. So this is an application called Table Plus, and basically what it does is it lets you open up all sorts of SQL and non-SQL databases and tables. So here we're going to create a new connection to our table. So again, like I said, this supports all of these different databases, but I'm using SQLite here, so I'm going to press create. And then for the name, let's say SQLite demo users. All right, and then let's just make this red. And then this is the most important part, select file. So now I have to go to the correct folder, which right now it isn't in the correct folder. So let me just get there. All right, so, all right, so now we're in the correct folder. So I'm just gonna press users.db, which is the one that we created, and then press open, and then connect. And then out, and then now here we can see the connection. And then here there we have our table, which is users. And then if we click it, there we go. So as you can see, we don't have any data, obviously, because we didn't add any data, but you can see the three columns that we created, name, password, and age. And if you hover over it, you can see that it says integer, and then for password, it says text, and name is text. So there we go, that worked. We've successfully created a database and a table in Python using SQLite. So the next thing we're going to have to do is actually add data into our table. So let's get to that. So I'm going to go to my addData.py file so that we can actually code in this. And then again, I'm going to import SQLite 3. And actually, you know what? We can just copy the first three lines here because this is all we're going to do. So we're creating a connection and a cursor into our users.db, which is already created at this point. And then now for adding data, we would have to use a different command, which is a different query. So let's actually run that query. So I'm gonna say cursor.execute, and then here we can add our query. So we're going to use the insert query so that we can insert some data. So we're gonna say insert into, and then whatever our table name is. In this case, it's called users, just like in table plus, as you can see, it's called users. So insert into users, and then we have to add all the values that we want to insert. So we need to add the values based on the column headers. So we have name, password, and age, two texts, and then one integer. So let's say we want to have for uh, the first column, which is name, Let's just say Rishabh, and then after that, we'll have another text, which is the password. Let's just say one, two, three, four, five, like this. That'll be the password, password. And then last one is a integer. So we can just, we don't need quotes. So let's say the age is 13. And then now we'll just copy this and then do this for three more times. So then instead of Rishabh, we'll say Josh, 
Ooh. And then this will be uh, password Josh. And then this one will be James. And then this will be password James. And then for this, I'll say 45. And then for James, I'll say 99. All right, so now we have a wide range of data. So we have Rishab, so we have Rishab, Joshua, and James. And then we have one, two, three, four, five, which is the password, and then we have the age. So now if we run this, then it should execute all of these queries, which we'll insert into our data, a database, or in this case, a table. Then last thing we want to do is commit this. So we're going to say connection.commit, just so that we can commit this. All right, and then we can just run the program. So I'm going to say Python 3, add data.py. And then there we go, that worked. So now for the big reveal, I'm going to close out table plus and then we'll just double click on this again. And then the final big reveal, drum roll please. And then if we click on users, boom, there we go. We have all of our data that we inputted. So we have Rishabh, Joshua and James and then all of the, uh, all of the other data that we added. So there we go. We've successfully added data into our table. The next thing we want to do in CRUD operations is to read the data and print it on the terminal screen, or even just keep it in the variable, whatever you want. So again, for reading, we're going to use the same first three lines. So I'm just gonna copy those three, just so that we can get the connection and the cursor so that we don't have to keep on repeating it. And then again, for all of these, we're using queries, just like how you would query stuff in a regular SQL kind of database. So, but in this case, we're doing it programmatically using Python. So I'm going to do a query called cursor.execute. I have so much trouble spelling this word, execute. Okay. And then we want to select all of the data from stores. So, so, and then we want to select all of the data from users. So I'm going to say select star. And whenever we're in programming, most of the times, whenever you say, uh, asterisk or star whatever you want to call it then that means everything even in imports like if you say from blah 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 import star then that means import everything so just like that select star means select everything and then from and then our table so users so now we're selecting all the data from users and then but you don't have to do just everything you can also do certain columns or certain rows just like that but i'm just going to select everything then we want to fetch all of that data that is in the cursor.execute because right now it's just executing it and it's not giving it back to us. So I'm going to make another variable called results because this is going to be the results of that query. So results equals cursor.fetch all because now in the cursor variable it's going to have this query run ran. So it'll we need to fetch all of the stuff that we got from our cursor and then we just want to print results. So print results okay there we go so right now we've connected to our users dot database and then we're going to select star which is select everything from our table which is called users so it should hypothetically in theory it should get all of the table data and then print it back to us since we made it print it so let's save this and then let's just run it so python 3 and then read.py and there we go, that worked. So here in array format, we have the first um, row, which is this Risha, one, two, three, four, five, 13. Then we have Joshua, password Josh, 45. And then we have James, password James, 99. And as you can see, it's in a table, it's in a uh, array format. So hypothetically, we should be able to index this. So let's say we wanted to get the first row, which is the Risha one then we should be able to say with an result with an index of zero, and it should get just the ratio of one, two, three, four, five, six, and then 13. So let's just run this again. And there we go, that worked. And you can even go one step further by saying results of zero, and then inside of that, again, zero. So that would get just Rishabh. So let's just save that and run that again. And then it'll just get Rishabh. And if you say zero, one, then it should get the one, two, three, four, five. So there we go, one, two, three, four, five. And then if we do two, then it should get 13 because that's the last index. So let's just test that out. And then there we go. 
So as you can see, we can index through the whole data and then we can index through just one row. So there we go. That's how to read everything in a table using Python. So let's just clear this. So the next thing we want to do is update. So let's say that we want to change the values in our table. Then we can do that with the update um, query. So here we're going to use our query again, cursor.execute. Execute. And then here we want to use the update query. So update. Oh, I don't have caps lock on. OK, update. And then users, since that's our table name. And then set. And then now we want to change one of the one whole column, right? So let's change the age. Let's say we want to set everyone's age to whatever we want. So in this case, let's say let's say we want to change everyone's age to 20. So now hypothetically, let's just commit that. So cursor.commit. So hypothetically, now it should change everyone's age to 20. So let's say Python 3 and then update.py. And oh, uh, commit, did I spell that wrong? Oh, not cursor.commit connection. Sorry, my bad. Whenever you commit something, you can't commit the cursor, obviously. It has to be the connection. That was my bad. Uh, clear. Okay, and then let's run that program again. And there we go. That worked. So now let's just close this out so that we can uh, see it again. And drum roll, please. Let's go back to users. And there we go. So it's set everyone's age to 20. So now we've successfully changed the values in our table. We've updated it programmatically. And you don't have to change everyone's age. If you want to change just one person's age, you can change the query like that. And this is the exact same query uh, SQL syntax. This is the same query syntax as PostgreSQL. So it's very simple. All you have to know is the Python like functions and stuff. And there we go. That's updating. Finally, we need to delete stuff. And this is the last part of the video, which is the CRUD operations. So let's just copy paste those first three lines, which is very needed. And then let's delete some stuff in the database. So I'm going to use our qu queries again. So cursor.execute. Keep spelling that wrong. Execute. Okay. And then now let's put the caps lock on and delete. Delete from and then our table which is users so whenever you in this syntax whenever you say something from users that's implying that you want to do some operation on our users table which is what we're working with so let's say delete from users let's say we want to delete the whole whole um line let's delete the rishab line the first one so delete from users then we don't want to delete everything so we're just going to say where and then we can use any any column so let's say where name equals wait is that what's called yeah name equals uh name equals and then oh my bad okay i did something wrong okay name equals and then we want to say risha because so wherever the name is equal to risha if there's somehow if there's another column where risha the name is risha then it'll delete both of those but in this case we only have one so it should delete this one because we said delete from the users table wherever the name column is equal to risha which in this case is only the first line the first row and then again we need to do connection.commit And then there we go. So now we should, now whatever it should do is, it should delete this Rishab line because we our query was delete from users, which is our table, wherever the name is equal to Rishab. So let's say Python 3 and then delete.pyrite. So delete.py and it worked. Okay, so now let's just close this. And then again, we need to open this up. And then drumroll please, it should have deleted the Rishab row. And there we go. It now only has Joshua and James. So there we go. We've successfully deleted a whole column. And you don't have to do just uh, the name column. You can also index it by password or age. So let's say we do it from password because if we did age, they're both the same thing. 
So password equals, and then password Josh, I think it was called. If we want to delete the Joshua uh, row, then we can say delete from users where password equals to, and then in this case, it's called password Josh, I believe so. Let's check that. Yeah, it's called password Josh. So now it should delete the Joshua columns, and only the James columns should be there. So let's just run that again to test it. And then there we go, that worked. So let me take out this and then open it up again users and there we go so now it deleted that also so there we go we've successfully deleted a whole row by the name column and the password column but you can also do any column so there we go that's crud operations in sqlite so at the beginning we just created one whole database and then one whole table using queries and then from then onwards we ran the queries in python using our cursor.execute function so we've added data, read data, updated data, and deleted data, which is all of the CRUD operations in SQLite. So there we go. That's SQLite. So there we go. In this video, we worked with SQLite. First, we just introduced SQLite, and then we worked in Python to run some queries in SQLite so that we can first create a table and a database. In our file structure, we just created a database and a table, and then we opened it using the Table Plus application. Then we ran all sorts of queries through Python programmatically. Like, for example, we added data using this insert query, then we read data using the select query, then we updated and deleted data, finishing all of the CRUD operations in SQLite. Now, my next video will be using SQLite as a backend for an application that I'm going to be creating. So stay tuned for that. Thanks very much for watching. If y'all had any doubts, please comment down below. I would love to help you out if you're stuck with any SQLite questions or issues. Please like, subscribe, all that jazz. Until then, you can learn anything.